Hi friends, it's Belinda here from Bee Making Joy and welcome to my channel. This is uh, episode 10 of What Brings Me Joy. This is where I come to you from my home in Calgary, Alberta, Canada to share my knitting, uh, some sneak peeks of things I'm designing and uh, a little bit about my life. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad to have you back. Uh, today is Tuesday, June the 20th. And again, it's another episode of me unpacking and repacking. I have just spent two weeks in Nova Scotia with my parents uh, for my sister's burial and a visit. And then uh, attended a convention, a Jehovah's Witness convention in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Now I'm back and I need to unpack, repack. We're off to Coeur d'Alene where my husband is running an Ironman race. Uh, I didn't get very much knitting done while I was away, but I do have one small finished object to show you and a little bit of progress on two other projects. And I have some new yarn. Uh, I have some yarn that uh, my cousin gave me to remember my sister by. I need to decide what to make with that. And I have just picked up the yarn of the month from Ancient Arts Yarns here in Calgary, the color of the month. So I will share those with you. Um, First, a bit of an update. It's been a tough couple of weeks, as I'm sure you can imagine, but there were some moments of joy. And I have some footage for you that I will insert at the end of this video. I, from my parents' property on the Shubenacadie River, I was able to watch the tide come in and the rafters ride the wave as it comes in. What happens is the river is running out towards the bay. And then when the tide comes in, the uh, river rushes back upriver the water rushes upriver and rafters ride the waves with it so i got a little bit of footage of that i'd like to share with you and i was also able to uh, watch the farmers cutting the hay on my dad's field and afterwards at the end of the day there was a glorious sunset so i will share that with you at the end of this video um my lungs held out quite fine during the trip well until the day that the hay was being fluffed um, you might know that Nova Scotia, Canada, as most of Canada actually, has been battling huge wildfires. And um, many people lost their home, others were evacuated for quite some time. Uh, actually, as I arrived, it also started raining around about that time, and so they were able to get things under control. And on the day that I left, they were able to lift the fire ban and reopen the hiking trails. You know, I was amazed at the number of fines that they give. They were giving out $28,000 fines for people who were disobeying these orders. I'm amazed at the number of people who still were disobeying those orders. So, yeah. Um, also, on the day that I left, it was really hot. So that night as I'm trying to sleep, I left the window open and the blind open. And I'm lying there and I see these a flash of light in the trees and then another flash and I'm starting to freak out I'm thinking is that embers is there a fire starting or drifting embers drifting from somewhere is that somebody in the woods with a flashlight and then a firefly buzzes by the window so I could, could see by the light on it that it was the firefly so then I realized those are fireflies in the in the trees and so I had fun watching them as I fell asleep. I didn't get any footage of that for you. Unfortunately, I didn't get back out of bed for my camera. I just laid there and enjoyed it. So it was a nice end to a very tough trip. Um, it was good to see a lot of people uh, uh, under difficult circumstances. It was a really nice burial for my sister and then a celebration of life gathering afterwards. So as I said, I didn't get very much knitting done but I do have uh, one small finished object. I did another pair of spa socks uh, intended for when you moisturize your feet, put some socks on, separate your toes for a nice little stretch, maybe do your toenails while you wear them. My previous, I've shown you, I talked about this a few episodes, my previous pair I did in bamboo. I'm retrying in acrylic in different sizes. I haven't worn these yet, haven't tried them yet, so I will let you know whether I prefer the bamboo or the acrylic, we'll see. And I'm going to try yet another size so that I can release the pattern with three sizings for you. Um, if you're interested in test knitting this, do pop me an email 
because I haven't got a test nick officially set up yet, but if you're interested and want to jump the queue, <laughs> an email at bemakingjoy at gmail.com. Uh, the link, or the address, email address will be in the description box below. Now, what else did I do? I did a little bit of progress. Well, a lot of progress on this one. On the airplane, I managed to finish one panel of my so soccer version of the stadium sit upon. There, I think that's right side up. And then at my parents' house, I started, I, at the house, I did the entire shift for the second one. Then on the airplane home, I did most of the outer edge of that piece. So almost ready to assemble. Um, as you may realize, I've been working on this project since late August, late summer last year. Um, did a football version first. And I'm thinking I want to put a closure at the top. Should I put a button? One button? Two buttons, maybe? Or maybe a zipper? I welcome your thoughts on that. A zipper is a little bit harder than buttons, but what should I put in the pattern? A zipper or a button? Or two buttons? And as you know, my soccer version, or my hockey sticks version, it's completed but not assembled yet. It's smaller. I'm doing it for three different sizes as well. A 14 inch pillow, a 16 inch pillow, or an 18 inch pillow. So obviously this is the 18 inch one, nice and big. And the soccer version, I'm working on the 16 inch. Now that's where that stands. Uh, haven't gotten yarn yet for my baseball or my basketball version. Once they're all completed, I will look for test knitters. I want to test them all first myself because for each of these three that I've done, as I started knitting the graph, I realized there's something I want to tweak. So I want to get all that tweaking done first before I put out a call for test knitters again. So that's that. And then the only other project that I took with me on the trip was my water bottle sling. You might recall last episode, I spur of the moment started a water bottle sling with a cell phone pocket. I already have a pattern on mine for a water bottle sling, not with this rib version though. I'm improving it and adding a pocket for a cell phone. Um, but I ran out of yarn. I have more yarn here, but I only took one small ball with me of scrap yarn and misjudged how much I needed. I didn't weigh the ball first and actually think about it properly. I just grabbed a ball and went. So that's how far that got. So, you know, this is going really quickly. This is going to be a very short episode, but that's okay. Uh, one finished object, two progress on other things. That's all that I've done since our last episode. So, let's look at some yarn. I should have taken them out of the bag first. rattling out, I promise. Okay. So as I said, my cousin came to me at my sister's uh, celebration of life and gave me this yarn and said, make something with it to remember your sister by. And I remember when she posted this on her Facebook page quite a while back, I really liked it and I told her so. And uh, she had won it in a contest. I don't know what the contest was or any of that stuff, but it is yarn from Lolo Did It, which is somebody that I have been following for a while now, but I have not yet had a chance to try any of her hand dyed yarns. This colorway she calls Smells Like Fall. It's fingering weight. There's 430 yards in this skein. And it's a purple. As you know, I love purple. 
My sister also liked purple. She liked the purples and the reds. And I like the purples and the blues. So I think the purple and pink is going to be a nice tribute to her. Nice way to honor her. So it's going to take a while to decide what I'm going to make. I welcome any suggestions. I'm kind of considering a love note. I would have to pair it with something else to make it the gauge thick enough for a love note. Um, also thinking maybe I might like a cardigan, a little short sleeve cardigan or a long sleeve. If this is not enough yarn by itself for a garment, I could always add a solid color that matches on the rib, on the cuff, on the waistband. I could add a solid color to fix it up. But I'm thinking a nice lacy design of some sort across the shoulders. What are your thoughts? That's wonderful. Thank you, Meredith. And I also picked up the color of the month from Ancient Arts. Uh, as you know, I have a subscription to this, but you can buy their color of the month for a limited time only individually. So I will link their online shop in my show notes. But I also wanted to tell you that they were featured recently on River City Yarns podcast. And I like River City Yarns podcast, podcast and they, Cynthia and Barb, <clears throat> Cynthia and Barb of River City Yarns did a wonderful job. Uh, they interviewed Caroline and Heather, uh, Caroline's the owner, Heather's a staff member. I saw Wendy and Dan on there as well. And they gave a tour of their store. Um, they talked with Caroline, the owner and designer. And they had a demonstration of their dyeing process, and that was really fun to see. So I could, I'll link that below. So, as always, I will read you the, the description that they posted for this colorway. Let's find it. <clears throat> as summer arrives in the Northern Hemisphere, the next stop on our tour of famous archaeological sites takes us to the Salisbury Plain in southwestern England. We're visiting the world's most famous prehistoric monument at Stonehenge. This unique man-made monument has fascinated people for centuries. The entire site is an archeological treasure trove of bronze and Neolithic age artifacts and includes some of the earliest burial sites in Britain. Important archeological finds of jewelry, pottery, and animal bones lead, lead researchers to believe that the stone circle was used for important ceremonies and rituals. The actual circle of stones that everyone thinks of when they think of Stonehenge was erected in the late Neolithic period, about 2500 BCE, about four and a half thousand years ago. There are two types of stones used in the circles, the larger stars and stones, which are solidified, sandstone bonified, solidified? Sandstone, sandstone boulders brought from the chalk downs in southern Britain and the smaller blue stones. The blue stones, so named because they appear blue and wet, are from an area in southwestern Wales that is 230 kilometers, 140 miles away. Each ring of stones are generally uniform in size and state, shape. I think you mean each stone in the ring? And each weighs approximately 25 tons. There are many theories about how the stones were brought to the site and set into the ground. Although we, were never, although we will never know exactly how or why Stonehenge was built, we do know that the stones were deliberately placed so that they align with the sunrise at the summer solstice, which is actually tomorrow, isn't it? And sunset at the winter solstice. So that's the sunset at Stonehenge. Um, where was I? From the middle of the stone circle, you would see the sun rise just to the left of the heel stone. This alignment of the stones with the celestial movements, along with the monument's enormous size and meticulous craftsmanship, shows Stonehenge's immense importance for the arch. arch oh goodness! Breathe. <laughs> This alignment of the stone with celestial movements along with the monument's enormous size and meticulous craftsmanship 
shows Stonehenge's immense importance for the agricultural, religious, spiritual, and ceremonial needs of the people who built it. So that's that, and I will put up their picture, their inspiration picture of sunset at Stonehenge. Gorgeous. Now, I will, I can't think of anything else. So I will leave you with my footage of the tidal bore and then the hayfield with its glorious sunset. And I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please click the like button. As always, it helps more people to see the channel. And if you want to be notified when the next episode gets published, you can subscribe and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy jigsaw puzzling, happy card making, happy whatever it is that you do. Go find some joy. You can see the tide just starting to come in and the river starting to change direction. Sandbar out there is almost covered now. Still not very high though. Not yet. Closer to the bank now for a better view. We can see around the corner a bit. The marsh down there starting to fill in. I think I hear the rafters, they'd be way down there, out, out towards the bay. How quickly the sandbar is disappearing. And then the rafters should be coming around the bend soon. My dad actually drives down there with the dune buggy when the tide's out. I love how the flow downstream meets the flow upstream and swirls around. down there on the cliff. I saw him go out and fish something out of the water. I think there's only two boats tonight.